Welcome to yet another session where we'll be discussing the T distribution. Now the T distribution is part of three key topics. Number one, the T distribution can be done under estimation where the confidence interval will be used for samples less than 30. We can use the T distribution to understand the T test for one sample, the T distribution to understand the two paired and the unpaired test. T distribution is also used for the regression uh, samples. Usually those ones are less than 30 as well. And so to start with, a T distribution follows what we call a normal distribution. However, this is only for observations that are starting from 1 to 30. A T distribution happens to be one of the trickiest distributions that students find a challenge, starting from the way it is read and the way it is applied. The general rule that you need to understand is simply that the T distribution is mainly used for samples mainly less than 30. The formula for a single sample is the same as the Z sample formula, where T is equal to X bar minus mu S over root N. Now there's nothing so particularly difficult or special about the T distribution except that you have two key formulas. For one sample, you just use the same formula that is used for the Z. The difference only comes when you're dealing with two samples where our T is given by the mean for sample one minus the mean for sample two then we divide everything this is called our pooled variance one over the n1 plus one over the n2 that's all where the put variance is simply given by put in this case means brought together. It is put, not for pulling towards you, but for pulling together. So this is called the put variance. So it is given by N1 minus one, then variance for sample one plus the same this side, except that we're dealing with N2. N2 minus one, then variance. Squared. Then the degree of freedom for two samples is simply N1 plus N2 minus 2. That is all. Now I'll take you briefly to understanding how we read the T table. I'll take you briefly to how we read the T table. The T table is read by my two single formulas. Number one, you need to identify your level of significance. Number two, you need to uh, divide by half. If it's a two-tailed, or you need to multiply by two if it's a single-tailed. Then degree of freedom will be 
for one sample, I'm putting one there. It will be n minus one. Again, here in the degree of freedom, if it's two samples, it's simply n1 plus n2 minus two, because you're subtracting one from each of them. So without much ado, I will ask that we try to find the readings for the following. We have the confidence level, 90%. And we have our N as 11. Here part B, we have our alpha, 0 0.0. 0, 1 and our n is 19. So the steps that we're going to use in each of these ones here we have significance level 5% and here our n is and finally here we have confidence level as 98% N1 is 8 and N2 is 9 I'm going to explain this exhaustively I need you to understand so step one, find our level of significance. So the level of significance at 90% is the difference from 100 to the confidence level given, so which is 10%. So our step one is 10%. Step two, half of this significance level is 5%. Step three, n minus one, since this is a single sample n minus 1, so 10, 11 minus 1 is what? 10. Then you go where they meet. So when we go to the t table, you will find the reading. Let me just broadcast the t table. you find statistical table and uh, five ten percent under five percent then under n minus one so the t distribution is here so we say ten then half of ten is five then 11 minus 1 is 10. So this is the reading for the TDS table. So this is how the T table is read. Now, sometimes the T table comes in a different way. And people fail to understand how do we know which T table to use. The other T table can come in a decimal point form like this. But the logic is still the same. 10% here is in decimal, 0 0.10. And then 5% is on top in this case, under 10. The figure is 1.812. So this is the reading that we are finding here. So, you need to know that the two tailed is on top, the one tailed is down. So you need to know which one to follow through. So I'm going to take you through the second one. 
we are asked to find the reading for alpha 0 0.001 and the n is 19. So we know that alpha, when you multiply times 100, this one is the significance level. So multiply times 100, 1, 2. So here, significance level will be 0 0.1%. Then half of this one will be 0 0.05. The n is 19 minus 1 is 18. So 18 is there. So where they meet 0 0.01 and 0 0.05. So when we go here, 0 0.01 and 0 0.05. And we read under what? 19 minus 1, which is 18. So here we get 39, 22. 39, 22. So 3.922. So this segment is very important in reading the table because it helps you really understand where the figures are coming from. This one here, although it's upside down, 0 0.01 under 0 0.05 under 19. Okay, so 0 0.001, these are already in decimal, under 0 0.0005 under 19. So under 18. So 39.22, the same figure is here. So students usually find it difficult to interpret these two tables because they become so quick without understanding the decimals. This one is straightforward. Pearson, lead us through how we read this one. Step one. Okay, step one. We first find the significant level. Which is? We're going to already given 5%. 5%, yes. Then? Then, so we divide the 5% by two, mm -hmm. which will be 2.5. 0 0.25, mm -hmm. yes, 0.5. Yes, then. and then, and then we, our N is six, so, we are going to subtract one from the end, which, which should be five. Yes. Five. All right. Then where they meet here? Where they meet? We go to the uh, table. We go to the table. So 5%, 5 2.5, 2 under five. Yes. 25, 71. If you want okay. here, 0 0.05, 0 0.025, and what? 5. It's then 5, it's the same. Okay. All right. Then, when we go to this one here, what is our level of significance? 2%. Because of the confidence level of 98%. Half of it, 1%. 1%. But we have two samples, sample one and sample two. So if you have two samples, you add them and subtract the what? A two. So eight mm -hmm. minus one, nine minus one. You're subtracting one from each of them in short. So this is seven plus eight, which is 15. 15. Or you can add this plus that, 17 minus two, 15. So this is where the logic is coming from. So two. 1% under 15. So this is where we're getting the 2602. This is where we're getting the 2602. Okay. So that is how the reading is done. Now, 
having understood how the reading is done under the T test, it is now imperative that as we go to some questions that have sample sizes less than 30, we understand the logic behind answering them. So hypothesis testing falls in three key topics. I've taught you all the key topics under the Z. Now I want you to distribute these ones. I only have 30 minutes. I'll try to be as fast as I can. Number one, underestimation. Underestimation, I taught you the formula for confidence interval. Never they ask you what confidence interval is required. Okay? When your N is 25, the standard deviation is 10. Your mean is 20. And your level of significance is 5%. So using confidence interval, confidence interval is given by an X bar plus or minus our T. If I put this whole thing, I hope it does not confuse you. It follows the, all the steps that we're just doing. You divide by 2, n minus 1, all right? You can leave it if you want to avoid confusion because all those steps will be followed during the reading of the T table. So the key part is I want you to remember how did we read this T table. So step 1, find the level of significance, which is 5%. Step 2, half of this one, which is 2.5%. Step 3, n minus 1. Our n is what? 25. That's why we're using a t. 25 minus 1 is 24. So we're checking under 5%, 2.5 under 24. When you go into the table, 5%, 2.5 under 24. Here it is. 2064. 2064. So our x bar here is what? 20 plus or minus 2064. Our standard deviation is 10. of 25 is 5. 5 into 10 is 2. So you're going to multiply 2.064 times 2. So this one will ultimately give us 20 but the margin of error, when you multiply these two, here we have 8, here we have 12, here we have 1, here we have 4 point, that. So, you first subtract 20 minus that, and you add 20 plus that. And subtract 20 minus that, and you add 20 plus that. So you get your confidence interval using the T test. So the idea and the skill is mainly about having to know how to read the T distribution table. Under hypothesis testing, for one sample,
in a two-tailed test. You may be asked to test the, the, the difference of uh, two samples, no, of one sample. So you may be given your hypothetical mean as 10, Here n is 16, standard deviation is 8, confidence level is 90, and x bar is 15. In the first place, with the data that has been given, we should remember quite well in hypothesis testing that step one, we need to state the hypothesis. Step two, we need to state the level of significance, which is in this case, 10% our level of significance. Where's the 10% coming from? The confidence level of 90%. When you get the difference, it will give us 10%. Step three, we need to come up with the decision rule. The decision rule is based on the critical values we use after the reading. Remember, step one, find the what? A level of significance, which is 5%, 10%. Half of 10%, 5%. N minus one, our N is what? 16 which is less than 30. 16 minus one is 15. So let's check where the reading is coming from. 10%, 5%, under 15. 10%, 5%, under 15. This is what? 1753. Are we together? Yes. 1753. So these are critical values that we use now here. 1753 on the left bound, then here 1753 on the upper bound, except that the left bound will be what? Will be a negative. In hypothesis testing, whenever your answer falls within the shaded region, this is called the rejection region. Whenever we are rejecting, it means there's a significant difference between the two means. When your answer is within, within here, the unshaded region, we call this a what? The accept region. Whenever we're accepting, it means there's no significant difference between the two means. So the formula for the T calculated is that of Z, where our mu from the X bar over standard deviation root n. Our x bar has been given as 15. Our mu is 10 over our standard deviation, which is 8 over the square root of 16. So we're trying to test the difference between 15 and 10, whether it is significant enough difference which is five this standard error is two so two into five is 2.5 so we need to identify our 2.5 is it in the shaded region or inside the unshaded region from there you can see that it's in the shaded region so we're going to reject what h o and conclude that there's a significant difference in the two means at what percent? At 10% level of significance. We are going to reject our HO. So you have learned how to read the table, how to apply it in hypothesis testing, and how to actualize your decision. Now there are times when you're given two samples, sample one and sample two where your 
mean, for example, one, here may be 10, here the mean is five. Standard deviation, here it is two, maybe here it is three. And now n, here it is eight, here it is nine. Already the average of these two means is less than 30. Even if we had 40 here and we had 10 here, the average of them is 50 divided by two is what? 25, you still use the T distribution, you get the average. So we have HO and H1. Here we're testing the difference between the two means. So you say mu one is equal to mu two. Here we are saying mu one is not equal to mu two. Step one. Step two, let's get the level of significance here. Of course, whenever we're not given the level of significance, our standard is 5%. If you're not given the level of significance, the standard is 5%. So here, our level of significance is what? 5% we've been given. So then step two, we read our T which will give our critical values in here. So remember when you're dealing with two samples, step one, find the what? Level of significance, which is 5%. Step two, half of the 5%, which is 2.5. Step three, N1 plus N2 minus two. So this is 17 minus two is 15. So let's find the reading, 5%, 2.5, under 15. So you go to 5%, 2.5, then under 15. How do we get? 21, 31. Are we following? Yes. 21, 31, is it? So this will make us have our critical values here. On the left side, 21, 31. On the right side, 21, 31. Now, this is where we now go to calculating what is called our pooled variance. This is where we calculate our calculated but also our pooled variance so t calculated is equal to mean one minus mean two minus mean two divided by Hello? so this is how we're calculating this So mean one minus mean two over the put variance. Which is going to be calculated separately. Now this is one part that most students fear. But I'm demystifying this mystery here. To say it's very easy. It's just following the rules of engagement. So what is our mean one? 10. Minus, what is our mean two? Five. Over, we can get the put variance alone, separately. But our sample size one is what? Eight. Plus, our sample size two is nine. There's nothing to fear here. The put variance, we already explained that it's given by
n1 minus 1 plus n2 minus 1. All the data has been given. Sometimes a lecturer would want to be funny and give you uh, the variance in the, the data. So whenever you are given variance here, you don't need to square it here. Don't forget the rules. So here we're going to have 8 minus 1. times 2 squared plus 9 minus 1 times 3 squared over 8 plus 9 minus 2. The answer you get, you put it here. And the value you get, you deduce from there whether or not you're going to accept or reject the now hypothesis. So what I've taken you through today is in a simple way, understanding how to utilize the t-distribution from estimation to a single sample and uh, 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 two samples using the t-distribution. So I will not deviate from what I've taught you. I'll give you some homework based on what I have just explained. Unless there's anyone who's been thrown out. Is that clear? Please, I'll give you simple questions, three easy questions. Just utilize what I have explained to you. I'll rest my case. Thank you.